Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena and I'm bringing you today's word for December 3rd, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Standing on a Word from God. We've been studying the life of David. This is part 61 of the overall series and part 33 of the life of David. The title of today's message, so we can set the tone for this, this whole week. The title of today's message on this Monday morning is real simple. Two words. Keep going. As a believer, you got to get to the point where you build up the resiliency to keep going. No matter what comes, come what may, you have to keep going. In our last message, we saw how King Saul kept sending David out there to battle, hoping that he will be killed in action. Now, as, as is normally the case with the plans of the enemy, they backfire on the enemy when the hand of God is on your life. So the plan backfired. And as David went out and led more people in combat and he would come back victorious, uh, mission after mission after mission, then he became even more popular. And then Saul's like, man, what am I going to do to kill this boy? He says, okay. He says to David, I'm ready to give you my oldest daughter, Mirab, as your wife. But first, you must go out there and prove yourself to be a real warrior by fighting the Lord's battle. So once again, he was like, this is not enough. He kept trying. He was like, one of these days, he's going to go out there. He's going to get killed in action. So he's like, David, I need you to go back out. But as some bait, uh, my oldest daughter, Merab, you can have her. You know, you can marry her. I'm going to give you a hand in marriage, but you got to go out and fight again. Now, this is actually ridiculous that we're even having this conversation. If you remember 1 Samuel 17 and 25, uh, back then in chapter 17, because today I'm covering 1 Samuel 18 verses 17 to 27. So I'm trying to cover a lot today. But back in chapter 17, in verse 25, the Bible says that whoever killed the giant was going to marry the king's daughter and their family wouldn't have to pay taxes anymore. So David already killed the giant. He already killed the most terrifying man, the tallest, the meanest, the baddest man that Saul had ever seen. And he already had led soldiers on multiple successful combat missions. So to say that he had to prove himself is ridiculous. But Saul was calculating. He was conniving. He was underhanded. You know how you meet people like that, right? They're always trying, they're, they're scheming, always trying to do some stuff. And the amazing part through all, all of this is that David was not moved. He was unfazed. He remained faithful to God and crazy. He was still faithful to Saul. So he says to Saul, listen, now who am I? And what is my family that I should be able to marry the king's daughter? I can't be the king's son-in-law. My family has nothing, right? He, so he was like, I'm going to remain humble. But that's fine because Saul didn't give him uh, the daughter anyway. So Saul took his daughter, even after all of that mess, he takes his daughter and gives her in marriage to Adriel, a Meholite. And so then while all of this mess was going on, Saul had another daughter. Her name was Michael. And Michael fell in love with David. Oh, and then news came back to Saul that, hey, your daughter, Michael, actually likes David. She's falling in love with David. So then the Bible says, look how conniving this man is. Then the Bible says, ah, Saul said to himself, ah, I have another chance, a second chance. I'll use Michael as bait to get David out there with the Philistines so that the Philistines can make short work of him. So again, Saul says to David, hey, David, come here for a minute. You're going to be my son-in-law, right? Um, I want you to marry Michael this time. And Saul was like, nah, I mean, uh, David was like, once again, David was humbling himself. He's like, I, I just can't see myself, you know, being a prince or marrying into the royal family. And so he's le he left. And so Saul gets his servants. He says, hey, I want you to go talk to David. Tell David, go get him by himself and then say, hey, man, the king is very taken with you. He likes you a lot. Everyone in the court loves you. So go ahead, man. Marry his daughter. It's OK. You can become the king's son-in-law. But David was so humble that he said, once again, he says, man, I can't. He says to them, man, I, I just don't have anything to offer. I'm a nobody. So Saul, they come back and say, hey, man, this is what he said. So then Saul says, OK, well, then go tell David this. This is like a like a soap opera, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm Hispanic. So this is like a novella, right? This thing. So, so the king says, OK, well, come in. Well, so then go back and tell him this. Look, the king isn't expecting any money from you. Uh, 
All the king wants is for you to go out there and kill a hundred Philistines. If you kill a hundred Philistines and bring the evidence back, then the king will let you have his daughter. And so this time David was like, oh, okay, well, finally something that I can deal with. I, I don't have any money to offer the king for his daughter's hand in marriage, but I could kill some jokers. I, I could lead some people in combat. So David takes his men. They go out there, fight against the Philistines, kill a hundred Philistines, bring the evidence back, lay it out before Saul and say mission accomplished. And this time Saul had no other choice but to give his daughter to David in marriage. Wow, this is crazy. This whole story is playing out. Remember, David is supposed to be king. David is anointed to be the next king of Israel, and he's going all through all this mess. So my message to you this morning is just keep going. Even when things look like they're going haywire, even when, like, you know, you drew out your plan, and your plan looked like this, A to B, right? That was your plan. This is how I'm going to get there. And it seems like you're doing all of this stuff in between, and it seems like you're going zig to zag, and you're being pulled from pillar to post, and you're going from here to there, and, and the path isn't going the way that you want it, and there's all these loopholes, and there's all these turns, and there's all this opposition, and people are acting crazy, and people say one thing, and then they do something else. That's okay. I'm telling you, Keep going. The only way you can lose is if you quit. As a believer, what you got to do, no matter what, come what may, you have to keep going. You got to be determined that you will not stop, that you will not cave in, that you will not quit. The only way you can lose is if you quit. So you, as a believer, you will not quit. There is no quit in you. You have to keep going. What does this mean to you today? I have four things to share with you on this Monday morning so we can set the tone for the whole week. You ready for these four things? Here we go. Open up your heart now to receive. Number one. Vengeance and recompense belong to the Lord. In the New Testament, Paul was quoting Leviticus when he said, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. This is found in Romans 12 and 19, and he was quoting Leviticus 19 and 18. Now, David could have easily gotten tired of Saul. If David was like me, if David was like you, you know, easily he would have gotten tired of Saul and he would have tried to get him back. He would have tried to get some type of, you know, vengeance or recompense. But here's the point. The point is this. As a believer, you don't have to try to get people back. At the end of the day, the Lord is the Lord of the harvest. He's going to see to it that they reap a harvest on every seed sown. If they're sowing bad seed, they're going to get a bad harvest. So don't try to get people back. At the end of the day, let me tell you a secret. The Lord is much better at getting people back than you ever could be. So just trust God. Number two, becoming the person God has called you to be requires patience. I know we don't like that word, Ugh, patience. But for you to be the man, the woman that God has called you to be, it requires patience. There's no such thing as an overnight success. Well, what happens is God will make you an overnight success after 20 years of processing. <laughs> so there's no such, such thing as an overnight success. David knew that he was anointed to be Saul's replacement, but he had to exercise divine patience. He had to endure these senseless and ridiculous attacks from Saul, but he was waiting on God's timing. When the fullness of time comes, God will open the door and you'll be able to walk through it. But until then, just keep believing God and be patient. Number three, Use what you have. Here's a good one. David didn't have money. And he was like, well, what do I do? What do I do? Because the custom was for me to, you know, marry somebody. I need to offer something to the father. This guy's the king of Israel. So what can I offer him? And he was like, well, listen, I don't want your money. What I want you to do is go kill 100 Philistines. Although he was being conniving when he did it, David was like, well, I could do that. Right. So I don't have money, but I can do that. The point is that you got to use what you have. You may not have, you know, don't focus on what you don't have. Focusing on what you don't have doesn't do anything. You got to focus on what you have. Remember when Jesus fed the 5,000? He says to the disciples, you go feed them. And it was like, well, we don't have anything. I mean, we don't, I mean, we don't have, how, how are we going to feed 5,000? And they said, well, what do you have? It was like, well, where was the need in the crowd? Where was the seed? In the crowd. There's a seed for every need. You got to use what you have. They was like, oh, well, in the crowd... Where the, where the need is, there's a seed. What's the seed? There's two fish, five loaves of bread. So there's a, like a two-piece fish dinner, right? But, but what is it amongst so many? Well, it depends whose hands it's in. So they says, okay, Jesus said, well, bring it unto me. And so when you're facing something, you got to take what you have, which is your seed, and put it in God's hands. So once they take the two 
two-piece fish dinner and put it in Jesus' hands. Now, in their hands, it wouldn't have done anything. But in Jesus' hands, he lifted it up to God, and now your seed can meet your need. He lifted it up to God, and whatever you have, which is your seed, God can use it to meet your situation. So David was like, I don't have money, but I have been trained to fight so I can fight. And his seed met the need of his situation. And God will do the same with you, but you got to put it in his hands. So take whatever you have this morning, no matter what you're facing, no matter how big it seems, take whatever you have and put it in God's hands and say, Lord, here's my seed. Let's meet the need. Number four. And finally, here's the point. Look at me. Look at me as I close out. Let me tell you this. They can't stop you. I don't care who they are, but they can't stop you. In this case, it was Saul. I don't care what their name is. They can't stop you. David could not stop David. Scheme after scheme. I mean, Saul could not stop David. Scheme after scheme. Plot after plot. All of Saul's tactics failed because the grace of God was on David. See, when you're operating under the grace of God, the enemy can do whatever he wants, but he can't stop you. The only person who can stop you is you. And that's why I'm telling you, the only way you can lose is if you quit. So don't worry about them. Just keep going. This, the message for you this morning, this Monday morning, is keep going. No matter what you're facing, as we close out the year strong, keep going. Listen, speak this over your life. This is a powerful confession, and you're going to have what you say. So say this. Father, I look to you for all things. I know you will see to it that I reap a harvest on every seed sown, and you will also see to it that others reap a harvest on the seeds they sow. Therefore, I do not seek revenge. When people rise up against me, sowing bad seed, I know two things. First, their attacks will fail because of your hedge of protection around me. And second, <laughs> they're going to reap a bad harvest from their bad seed. So I don't have to go after them. Vengeance and recompense belong to you. Also, when faced with a situation that is too big for me, which is my need, I refuse to focus on what I do not have. I look at what I have, which is my seed, and I place it in your hands. As I do, you bless it and you empower me to receive all you want me to receive in this season. And lastly, Father, I declare that every plot, plan, design, tactic, scheme, and strategy the enemy devises against me shall fail. No hex, vex, spell, or curse has any power over me. I am covered by your blood and filled with your spirit, and the enemy cannot curse what you have already blessed. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, please share this message with someone that you know, this message and the one that was previous to that. And also, uh, be a blessing to someone today. Make a determination right now that as you go, you're going to keep going. You're not going to be moved. You're not going to be shaken. And you're going to be so determined to be who God called you to be that you are going to live your life focused on being blessed so that you could be a blessing. No matter what you're facing this morning, keep going. God bless you.